Okay, so let's prove that this language is not regular. So n squared up here is for all integers at least n, uh, sorry, at least zero. So this represents an, a perfect square number of zeros, okay? So like uh, zero zeros are in there, so the empty string, or one zero, or four zeros, or nine, <laughs> nine zeros, 16 zeros, etc. And we claim that this is not regular. So let's proceed as we would normally do. Suppose L were regular. Then what we know is that there exists a pumping constant P for this language L. Then what can we do? Well, we need to pick a string that's in the language. So the usual technique is to substitute the P into the exponent right here where n is, not n squared, it'd be n. So the string that I'm going to pick here, choose w equal 0 to the p squared. Well, that's clearly in the language because I just substituted the number in. And p squared is always at least p when p is an integer. And so uh, that's, that's all that we actually need. Um, it turns out that this string does work. Generally, if you have a string that's in the language and long enough, it's not necessarily going to work, but in this case it does. So what are we going to do? Well, we got to look at all decompositions of this string into those three parts. So look at all decomps of w into x, y, and z according to the three parts. Well, since the whole string is zeros here, we know that the x part is gonna be some number of zeros, y is some number of zeros, and z is some number of zeros, because the whole string is zeros. Um, let's call the x part alpha, number of zeros. y is beta, number of zeros, where we know beta is at least one, because y has to be not empty. And then the z part is p squared minus alpha minus beta. Okay, so, Let's, let's think. Well, here what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a particular choice of i. So actually, first off, what do we need to do? Well, we need to choose some value i such that x, y to the i, z is not in the language because that would contradict the for all statement of this being in the language. Um, and then it will show us that it is not regular. Well, here I'm going to pick a particular choice of i and we'll see why it works. The reason for that is it's hard to get this to work in the general case, but if you look at a specific example, it's a lot easier. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to pick uh, i equal to 2. Okay. It turns out i equal 3 also works, but um, i equals 2 is the one that is usually done and the one I'm going to do here. So what is I, what is this string? x, y squared z, and we want to show that it's not in the language. We don't know that it actually is not in the language yet, but we need to show it. So let's just copy down the pieces. So 0 to the alpha, 0 to the 2 beta, because I have two copies of y here, and then the z part, which is just copied straight down from the decomposition upstairs. And then when the dust settles, the alphas get killed off, and one of the betas gets killed off, so I'm going to have p squared my, uh, plus beta here, okay? And what we need to show, or prove, is that this is thing is in L if and only if p squared plus beta is a perfect square. Well, let's see. So we know that uh, p squared is strictly less than this number that we just derived. And how do I know this? And I'll actually put it below. So we know that because the uh, beta itself is at least 1. And we know that because the part that we pump, which is the, which length is beta, has to be, the part that we pump is not empty. So the number of characters must be at least 1. So this thing is at least p squared plus 1, but it, it could be a lot higher, but it, it's definitely at least 1. So we know that it's not equal to this perfect square right here because it's strictly larger than it. But it turns out that 
um, this thing is always at most p squared plus p. And how do I know that? Well, I know, well, let's put it below. I know that because um, the length of x, y, whole thing is at most p, which implies that the length of y is at most p, and the length of y is beta. So the largest that the length of y could ever be is p characters. So this thing is at most this. It could be a lot less, but it's certainly at most this. But I actually claim that this is strictly less than the next perfect square upward after p squared. So this is a perfect square. This is clearly a perfect square. And I, I claim that there's a strict inequality there. And how do I know that? Well, let's see. So this, this right-hand side is equal to p squared plus 2p plus 1. And the reason it's a strict inequality is because of that. It's, be, it's because of that little bit right there. So that plus 1 gets that this is a strict inequality. So what we've derived here is that the length of the, the, of the string that we just made is not equal to that perfect square because of the strict inequality. And it's not equal to that perfect square because of that strict inequality. And there's no perfect squares in between these because they are consecutive perfect squares. And so therefore this length, whatever it is, is not ever a perfect square. And so that, that's how you show that this is not um, a regular language because if it were, then we would always hit a perfect square no matter what i value you choose, but we just chose one where we landed on a non-perfect square, the, this thing right here. So th this actually gives you good reason to why the i equal three one I mentioned earlier also works. Because if you substitute i equal 3, you're going to get a p squared plus 2 beta here. And then here, the upper bound will be p squared plus 2p, which is still going to be strictly less than p squared plus 2p plus 1. So the i equal 2 and the i equal 3 also work. I think maybe the i equal 0 1 also works, but I haven't checked. But higher ones, it's a lot harder to make sure that it's not actually a perfect square because it because it could potentially be equal to this one if it goes any higher than than p squared plus 2p okay cool so that's how you show that the perfect squares language is not regular